we move on to soil conservation because we need to know how to conserve and to maintain the soil. And what is soil conservation? It is the process used to prevent, the first one is to prevent soil erosion, prevention, also prevent depletion of soil nutrients and restoration of these nutrients. So these are the three basic steps. And how can we do this? Simple way is by afforestation. Means to plant more trees. Then we can also improve the quality of the soil. Soil quality. So that also is possible. Quality of soil can be improved. Then we can also have cover crops. In between cash crops, we could have some cover crops which can improve, which can give you nitrogen and it can increase the quality of the soil. So, thereby. So, these are the three methods. Now, we move on to the different soil conservation techniques or strategies. Strategies are just methods or the techniques that we use for soil conservation. The first one is proper land management. Okay, this is the first one. Or this is also called land use management. Okay, when we come to this, there are different land. We can call some lands as pasture land. Crop land, woodland. So we should know which one is suitable for what. Now pasture land means this would be for cattle. So how? Only by having grass, bushes, etc. All these will grow only in pasture land. Crop land. It's highly fertile and used for crops. Woodland is for trees. You can have sanctuaries, wildlife sanctuaries, and amusement parks and things. Everything can come under woodland. So this is what we do under land use management. This we should know. Otherwise, if you are going to misuse this in a different way, it's going to result in soil erosion. Okay. Now we move on to the second method that is terrace farming. And contour bun. Bunding. Now, these are two similar things almost. Only thing is, in contour bunding, what happens is, supposing there is a mountain in this shape, the shape is maintained and different steps are cut through and the Crops are cultivated that way. Whereas in terrace, there is a larger area and then it comes down. Again, there is a larger area. Okay. So the flat surface is more in the terrace farming. And there is also a place, water catchment area. Trenches are made where you have water. So the soil does not erode and the water is available for the crop. At the same time it is made flat. But the shape of the mountain or hilly area is not maintained in terrace farming. Whereas in contour bunding the shape is maintained 
and it's less wider steps and it does not have an arrangement for storage of water. So this is another method through which we can conserve the soil. Next we move on to crop rotation where supposing we cultivate paddy and the nitrogen in the soil becomes less it is followed by some leguminous plant which is called as legumes for example groundnuts are there pulses peas grass all these are legumes again paddy followed by legumes so this is called as crop rotation why it is crop rotation because these legumes they have something called root nodules in their roots they have root nodules and in these root nodules they store nitrates so in fact nitrogen gets converted into nitrates and this nitrate will move to the leaves so this happens in this root nodule and after some time after this crop is over they cut down they chop it off leaving behind the roots inside and then move on to paddy so this nitrogen is still available for paddy so the nitrogen content of the soil is maintained this is called as crop rotation the next one is controlled grazing what do you mean by that we saw that when we saw the causes of soil erosion one of the cause was overgrazing okay so we have to control we have to bring it under some measures so there is something called grazing policy which prevents or which prohibits grazing in regeneration areas which means it is just about coming forth it is just sprouting up in such areas it is prohibited then each forest division has some grazing units or units and they have to the the livestock have to go and maintain and graze only within that limit they should not cross that limit okay so these are the grazing policies then they should not go to protected forest areas so that soil is prohibited so that soil erosion is avoided then the last one under grazing policy is that pasture lands have to be developed because the demand is also high they also need grass for the livestock and so we have to develop pasture lands okay so these are the policies that will bring this grazing to a controlled manner the fifth method is tree breaks see when the direction of the wind is going this way the trees are planted at right angles to the direction of the wind so what happens is it prevents the velocity or it reduces the velocity of the wind thereby reduces soil erosion okay these tree breaks are also called shelter belts trees planted at right angles to the 
direction of the wind. This is called as tree breaks. Okay, next we move on to the sixth one that is check dams. Next is check dams, there, when there is a flow of water like this, in between you just have a small dam, small wall that is erected, so that water is stored in those places, that is called as check dams. This again, when along with water, when soil is just eroded, it prevents the soil from coming down and it minimizes soil erosion and conserves the soil to certain extent. Okay, the next important thing is the cropping systems. There are different varieties of cropping systems by which we can conserve the quality of soil. One we have already seen is crop rotation. This is already done. So this can also come under the cropping system. The second one is forage crops. These forage crops are also called as fodder crops. This is for the livestock. In places where you have less rainfall, okay, so Dense vegetation is not possible. In such areas, we can opt for forage crops. These crops, because of this grass and other things that, that is for the livestock, they build up the nitrogen content of the soil. So they are also called as building crops. So that's about the forage crops. Okay. The next one is mixed cropping. Sometimes you would see one layer of cabbage and followed by one layer of tomatoes and then again one layer of cabbage and then one layer. So like this in each layer, there is a difference, different crop. And because of this, one is harvested at a particular time, the other crop is harvested at a different time. So the soil is never left unattended or without a crop. Okay, so that is, that also prevents soil and uh, soil erosion and conserves the quality of the soil. The last one in this is, so that's about the cropping systems. The last one here is mulching. What happens in mulching is all the dead leaves are just left on the top soil, on top of the top layer. The dead leaves are just left there. Okay. And that's called as mulches. And this mulching has various advantages. One is it retains or helps to retain the moisture of the soil. And when the moisture is retained, it also increases or saves the microflora. What do you mean by this? This means the microorganisms which are responsible for the fixation of nitrogen, these organisms will increase when these leaves are on the top layer. So it keeps the soil moist, okay? Then it also decreases weed growth. So these are the three advantages of mulching. So that's about the cropping systems.